good wishes to all of you history of medieval india from satish chandra sir chapter 1 india and the world audiobook the thousand year period between the 8th and the 18th century saw important changes in india and the world new social and political forms rose in europe as well as asia the new forms also had profound effects on the thinking and living patterns of the peoples these changes had an impact on india also since india had long standing trade and cultural relations with countries around the mediterranean sea and the various empires which arose in the area including the roman and persian empires in europe the mighty roman empire had broken into two by the third quarter of the 6th century the western part with its capital at rome had been overwhelmed by the slav and germanic tribesmen coming from the east side of russia and germany these tribes came in many ways and indulged in a great deal of ravaging and plundering in the territories of the old roman empire but in course of time these tribes settled down in different parts of europe profoundly changing the character of the old population as well as the languages and pattern of governments the foundation of many of the modern european nations were laid during this period as a result of the commingling of these uh, tribesmen with the local population the eastern part of the old roman empire had its capital at uh, byzantium or constantinople this empire called the byzantine empire included most of the eastern europe as well as modern turkey syria north africa including egypt it continued many of the traditions of the roman empire such as a strong mon- uh, monarchy and a highly centralized administration however in belief and ritual it had many differences with the catholic church in the west which uh, which had its uh, headquarters at rome the church in the east was called at the greek orthodox church it was due to its effort and those of the byzantine rules that russia was converted to christianity the byzantine empire was a large and flourishing empire which continued to trade with asia after the collapse of the roman empire in the west it created traditions of government and culture many of which are later absorbed by the arabs when they over in syria and egypt it also acted as a bridge between the greco roman civilization and the arab world and later helped in the revival of greek learning in the west it disappeared finally in the middle of the 15th century when constantinople fell to the turks for centuries after the collapse of the roman empire in the west the cities virtually disappeared in western europe one cause of this was the absence of gold which the romans had obtained from africa and used for trade with the orient the period between the 6th and 10th centuries was for long called the dark age by historians however this was also a period of agricultural expansion which prepared the way for the revival of city city life from the 10th century and the growth of foreign trade between the 12th and the 14th century western europe was again able to attain a high level of prosperity a notable feature of this period was the growth of growth of science and technology growth of towns and the establishment of universities in a number of cities such as pavia and milan in italy the universities played an important part in the growth of new learning and new ideas which were gradually to lead to the renaissance and the rise of a new empire new europe growth of feudalism a new types of society and a new system of government rose in western europe following the break up of the roman empire the new order that gradually emerged is called feudalism this is derived from the latin word feudum which in english became fief in this in this society the most powerful elements were the chief chiefs who with their military following dominated large tracts of land and also played an important part in government the king was just like one of the more powerful feudal chiefs in course of time the monarchy became stronger and an attempt was made to limit the power of the chiefs who constantly fought each other leading to a 
state of social anarchy one method of controlling this was through the king swearing the chiefs to an oath of loyalty to him as his vassals and in return recognizing the trace of land dominated by the chiefs as their fiefs the chiefs in turn could appoint their sub chiefs as vassals and allot a tract out of their fief to them the king could in theory resume the fief of a disloyal disloyal vassal but in practice this was rarely done thus in the feudal system government was dominated by a landed aristocracy the aristocracy soon became hereditary and tried its best not to admit outsiders to its fold but it was never a completely closed aristocracy with disloyal chiefs being removed and new ones being appointed or rising to power the feudal system is associated with two other features first is the system of serfdom a serf was a peasant who worked on the land but could not change his profession or migrate to any other area or marry without the permission of his lord or master associated with this system was the ma- manor the manor was the house or castle where the lord lived in many of the european countries large tracts of land were owned by the lords of these manors a part of the land was cultivated by the lord directly with the help of serfs who had to divide their time between cultivating their own fields and the fields of their masters the land belonged theoretically to the lord and the serf had to pay him other dues in cash and kind the lord of the manor also had the responsibility for maintaining law and order dispensing justice etc since there was a great deal of lawlessness in those days even free peasants were sometimes prepared to accept the vassalage of the lord of the manor in return of protection some historians think that the system of serfdom and the manor system are vital parts of feudalism and that is uh, that it is wrong to speak of feudalism for societies in which these two did not exist in india for instance there was no serfdom and no manor systems as such but the local landed elements samantas exercised many of the powers of the feudal lords and the peasantry was in a dependent position to them in other words what married what mattered was not uh, whether the peasantry was formally free but the manner and the extent to which it could exercise its freedom in many countries of western europe the manor system and the system of labor used to used by the peasants uh, disappears after the 14th century the second feature associated with the feudal system in europe is the system of military organization the most typical symbol of the feudal system was the armored knight on horseback actually the system of cavalry warfare can roughly be traced back in europe only to the 8th century in the roman times the chief wings of the army were the heavy and light infantry armed with long spears and short swords short swords horses were used to draw chariots in which the officers rode It is generally believed that the mode of warfare changed with the arrival of the Arabs. The Arabs had a large supply of horses and their swift movements and mounted archers made the infantry largely ineffective. The problem of developing and maintaining the organization needed for the new mode of warfare helped in the growth of feudalism in Europe. No king could help to maintain out of his own resources the large body of cavalry that was needed and to provide them with armor and equipment hence the army was decentralized assigning to the fifth holders uh, sorry five holders the responsibility for maintaining a fixed force of cavalry and infantry for the service of the king cavalry warfare became the principal mode of warfare and on account of two inventions which though much older began to be used at only land scale during this period the first was the iron uh, stirrup the iron stirrup made it possible for a heavily armored person to sit firmly on a horse without uh, falling off it also made possible a cavalry charge with the lances held uh, tightly to the body without the rider being thrown off by the shock, shock of the impact the earlier device was either a wooden stirrup or a piece of rope which only provided a toy hole 
Another invention was a new types of harness which enabled a horse to draw twice the amount of load it pulled earlier. It is believed that both these inventions came to Europe from the east, possibly from East Asia. They spread in India from the 10th century onwards. Thus, many factors, political, economic, and military, were responsible for the growth of feudalism in Europe. Even when stronger governments emerged after the 11th century, the tradition had become too strong for the king to reduce easily the power of the feudal chiefs. Apart from the system of feudalism, the pattern of life in Europe during what is called the medieval period was also shaped by the Christian Church. We have already referred to the role of the Greek Orthodox Church in the Byzantine Empire and in Russia. In the absence of a powerful empire in the West, the Catholic Church took on some of the functions of the governments as well. The Pope, who was the head of the Catholic Church, became not only a religious head but also figured who exercised a great deal of political and moral authority. In Europe, as in West Asia and in India, the medieval age was an age of religion and those who spoke on behalf of religion exercised a great deal of power and influence. With the help of grants of land from the princes and feudal chiefs the don- and donations from rich merchants, many monastic orders and monasteries were set up. Some of these orders, such as that of the uh, Franciscans, served the needy and the poor. Many monasteries gave medical help or shelter to the travelers. They also served as centers for education and learning. In this way, the, chalcoli- uh, the Catholic Church played an important role in the cultural life of Europe. However, some of the monasteries which became exceedingly wealthy began to behave like feudal lords. This led to internal discord and conflict with the rulers who resented the worldly power of the church and of the popes. This conflict was reflected in the renaissance and reform movements later on. The Arab World the rise of Islam from the 7th century onwards was instrumental in uniting the warring Arab tribes into a powerful empire. The Arab empire founded by the early caliphs embraced apart from Arabia, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Egypt, North Africa and Spain. Following internal differences and civil war among the Arab tribes in the middle of the 8th century, the caliph at Damascus was displaced and a new dynasty called them. Abbasids came to power. They set up their capital at the newly founded city of Baghdad. The Abbasids claimed to belong to the same tribe to who which the Prophet Muhammad belonged and were for that reason considered holy. For about 150 years, the Abbasid Empire was one of the most powerful and flourishing empires in the world. At its height, it included all the important centers of civilization in the area with parts of North Africa, Egypt, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. The Abbasids controlled not only some of the most important religions of West Asia and North Africa, but also commanded the important red roads li- linking the Mediterranean world with India. The safety and security with the, which the Abbasids provided to these trade routes was an important factor for the wealth and prosperity of the people in the area and for the splendor and magnificence of the Abbasid court. The Arabs were keen merchants and quickly emerged as the most enterprising and wealthy merchants and seafarers in the world during the period. Numerous cities uh, which uh, numerous cities with uh, magnific- magnificent uh, buildings, both private and public eros, the stand of, standard of uh, living and the cultural environment of the Arab towns could hardly be paralleled in any country in the world during the period. The Arabs also established the gold dinar and the silver dirham which became the currency of trade all over the world. This was made possible by the Arab access to African gold. The Arabs also established double entry bookkeeping, advanced accountancy and large scale and elaborate banking and credit including bills of exchange hundis. The most famous caliphs of this period were Al-Mamum and 
Harun al Rashid. The splendor of their court and their places and of their patronage to men of science and learning became the subject of numerous stories and legends. During the early period, the Arabs displayed a remarkable capacity for assimilating the scientific knowledge and administrative skills of the ancient civilization they had overrun. For managing the administration, they had no hesitation in employing non-Muslims uh, such as Christians and Jews and also non-Arabs, particularly the Iranians, many of whom were Jerashians or even Buddhists. Although the Abbasid Caliphs were Orthodox Muslims, uh, they opened wide the gates of uh, learning from all quarters as long as it did not challenge the fundamental tenets of Islam. The Caliph all Mamum set up a house of wisdom Bait ul Hikmat at Baghdad for translating into Arabic the learning from various civilizations Greek, Byzantine, Egyptian, Iranian, and Indian. The example set by the caliphs was followed by individual nobles. In a short space of time, almost all the important scientific works of the various countries had become available in Arabic. We know a good deal about the impact of. Greek science and philosophy on the Arabs largely due to the work done in recent years by the devoted band of European scholars. We are also beginning to have a better idea of the impact of Chinese science and philosophy on the Arab world. Many Chinese inventions such as the compass, paper, printing, gunpowder and even the humble wheelbarrow barrow travelled from China to Europe via the Arabs during this period. The farmers Venetian traveller Marco Polo travelled to China in order to know more about it and to bridge the Arab monopoly on Europe's trade with China. Unfortunately, we have only a limited knowledge of India's economic and cultural relations with the Arab world during the period and India's scientific contribution to it. After its conquest by the Arabs in the 8th century, Since they did become a conduit of scientific and cultural links between India and the Arab world, the decimal system which is the basis of modern mathematics and which had developed in India in the 5th century travelled to the Arab world during this period. During the 9th century, it was popularized in the reason by the Arab mathematician all towards me. It was introduced to Europe in the 12th century by a monk Abelard and became known as the system of Arab numerals. Many Indian works dealing with astronomy and mathematicians were also translated into Arabic. The famous work on astronomy, Surya Siddhanta, which had been revised and reformed by Aryabhata, was one of these. Works of Charak and Susrutha dealing with medicine were also translated. Indian traders and merchants continued to visit the marts of Iraq and Iran and Indian physicians and master craftsmen were received at the Caliph's court at Baghdad. A number of Sanskrit literary works such as Kalilava Dimu Panchatandra were also translated into Arabic and formed the basis of Aesop's fables in the West. A more detailed study of the impact of Indian science and Indian sciences and philosophy on the Arab world and of the Arab sciences on India is now being made. By the begin, beginning of the 10th century, the Arabs had reached the stage when they could make their own contribution to the various sciences, the growth of geometry, algebra, geography, astronomy, optics chemistry, medicine, etc. in the Arab world during this period made in it, in it the leader in the field of science. The writings of Arab geographers and their maps advanced knowledge about the world. The Arabs also helped to develop new devices for traveling across the open sea. These devices continued to be used till the 15th century the accounts of the arab traders about india and the neighboring countries during this period are useful sources of information for us sorry some of the best stocked 
libraries in the world and the leading scientific libraries were established in the arab world during the period however it is necessary to remember that many of these achievements were the result of work done by people outside arabia in khurasan egypt spain etc arab science was truly international it has been called arab science because arabic was the language of literature and to in the entire area and people from various countries could move freely and work or settle down anywhere they liked the remarkable degree of intellectual and personal freedom enjoyed by scientists and scholars as well as the patronage extended to them was an important factor in the remarkable growth of arab science and civilization such freedom was not available in europe at that time due to the rigid attitude of the church perhaps conditions in india were similar for hardly any of the arab sciences could filter into india and the growth of indian sciences slowed down during the period arab sciences began to decline after the 12th century partly due to political and economical developments affecting the area but even more on account of the growing orthodoxy which stifled free thought but it continued to grow in spain until the 14th century Africa the arabs also brought africa more closely into the indian ocean and middle eastern trade arab migrations and mercantile activity along the east coast of africa increased enormously extending up to malindi zanzibar etc however the arab trade included the large scale large scale exports of slaves as also gold ivory etc there was in africa a powerful Ethiopian kingdom of long standing which had many towns the Ethiopians were engaged in the Indian ocean trade across Aden to India the Ethiopians called Habshis were Christians they were closely allied to the Byzantine empire in the Indian ocean trade their economic position weakened with the decline of the Byzantine empire east and southeast asia china's society and cultural had attained a new heights in the 8th and 9th centuries under tang rule the tang rulers extended their overlordship over large parts of xinjiang in central asia including kashgar this helped in giving a fillip to the overland trade across the what is called the silk road not only silk but fine quality porcelain and works in jade a semi precious stone were also exported to west asia europe and india across this road foreign traders were welcome in china many of them arabs persians and indians came to south china across the land and the seas they settled down in canton the tang empire declined in the middle of the 9th century and was replaced in the 10th century by another dynasty the sung which ruled over china for about 100 years its growing weakness gave an opportunity to the mongols to conquer china in the 13th century the mongols brought great death and destruction in china but due to their highly disciplined and mobile cavalry forces the mongol rulers were able to unify north and south china under one rule for the first time for some time they also brought under their Sui Tonkin, North Vietnam and Annam, South Vietnam. In the north, they overran Korea. Thus, the Mongols established one of the largest empires in East Asia. The Vietnam traveler Marco Polo, who spent some time at the court of Kublai Khan, the, farmers, the most famous of the Mongol rulers of China, has left a picturesque account of his court. Marco Polo returned to Italy. by sea visiting malbar in india on the way this already different parts of the world were coming closer together and their commercial and cultural contacts were increasing the countries of southeast asia had to meet the expansionist argues of some of the chinese rulers china having developed a strong navy by this time but during most of the time the southeast asian states remained independent the most the two most powerful kingdoms which flourished in the region during the period were the sailendra and kambuja empires the sailendra dynasty which 
arose in the 8th century and constituted the Sri Vijaya Empire, flourished till the 10th century at its height. The empire included Sumatra, Java, the Malaya Peninsula, parts of Oceania, modern Thailand and even the Philippines. According to a 9th century Arab writer, the empire was so large that even the fastest vessel could not complete it. A round trip of it in uh, two years. The Cylindra rulers had a powerful navy and dominated the sea trade to China. The Sri Vijaya Empire was replaced by the Majapahit Empire in the 11th century. It further extended the limits of the Sri Vijaya Empire and continued till the 14th century. The Pallavas of South India also had a powerful navy. The Pallava Navy was especially active in the Bay of Bengal. The state trade with the countries of Southeast Asia and China was so important that in 10th century, a Chola ruler sent a series of naval expeditions to Sumatra and Malaya to keep the sea lanes of communication open. Since the early centuries of the Christian era and even before, India had close trade and cultural contacts with the countries of the area. Many Chinese and Indian scholars visited Palembang, the capital of the empire, which was located in Sumatra and which had been a Sanskrit and Buddhist center of study even earlier. The rulers built magnificent uh, temples during the period, the most famous of them being the Temple of Borobudur in East Java dedicated to the Buddha. It is a bowl mountain carved into nine stone terraces uh, surmounted by a stupa. Indian epics such as the Ramayana and the Mahabharata are displayed in the panels of the temple. These epics continue to provide the themes for literature, folk, art, puppet plays, etc. The Kambuja Empire extended over Cambodian Annam, South Vietnam and replaced the Hinduist kingdom of Ophion, Phonan, which had dominated the area earlier. The Kambuja Empire flourished till the 15th century and attained a high level of cultural development and prosperity. Its the most magnificent achievement may be considered the group of temples near Angkor Thom in Cambodia. Begun in the 10th century, each ruler built a new temple there to commemorate his memory till about 200 temples were built in an area of 3.2 square. 3.2 square kilometers of this the largest is the temple of Angkor Wat it has three kilometers of covered passages containing beautiful statues of Hindu gods goddess and names apsaras and skillfully executed panels containing scenes from the Ramayana and Mahabharata this entire group of building had been completely forgotten by the outside world and been largely taken over to over by the jungle till it was discovered by a Frenchman in 1860. It is interestingly to note that the most vigorous period of temple building activity was the period from the 10th to the 12th century which also saw the most uh, magnificent, uh, magnificent period of temple building activity in India. Many Indian traders went to South China after traveling overland from the port of um, Takkala in the Malaya Peninsula to the South China Sea. Many Brahmanas and later Buddhist monks settled in countries of Southeast Asia and in South China. Buddhism travelled from China to Korea and Japan. India monks reached Korea, Korea and influenced the evolution of a Korean script close to the Indian one. While Buddhism declined in India in course of time, it, con it continued to flourish in Southeast Asia. In fact, it is uh, assimilated the Hindu gods into the Buddhist fold and even took over the Hindu temples a movement opposite to what was happening in India at the time. Thus India had close commercial and cultural contacts with the West, Southeast Asia, China as also Madagascar and countries on the east coast of Africa. The various kingdoms in Southeast Asia acted as a kind of a bridge for commercial and cultural contacts between India and China. 
and the outside world though deeply influenced by indian civilization and culture they were able to attain a distinctive culture of their own of a very high order arab traders who had been trading with the uh, south india and with the countries of uh, southeast asia earlier became even more active after the establishment of the abbasid empire but the arabs did not displace the indian traders and preachers in the early phase they did not make any special effort to convert the people of the area to islam the remarkable degree of religious freedom and tolerance and the commingling commingling of various cultures marked these countries a characteristic they have retained even today the conversion of indonesia and uh, malaya to islam took place gradually after islam had consolidated consolidated its position in india elsewhere buddhism continued to flourish commercial and cultural contacts between india and these countries were snapped only with the establishment of the dutch rule in indonesia the english rule in india burma and malaya and later the french rule in indo china thank you